Under the ethereal glow of a full moon, the coral reef sways patiently with the currents, lying in wait for just the right moment. These coral are primed for an ancient ritual, a synchronized dance of life, one that begins in almost an instant. Entire colonies across the reef release bundles of eggs and sperm into the waters. The ocean transforms, filled with billions of vibrant specks that rise to the surface like fireworks. There, fertilization occurs. The eggs will hatch into coral larvae that drift above. When mature enough, they will settle on the seafloor and repopulate the reef. But survival is far from guaranteed. As grand as this event may be, only around one in a million fertilized eggs will survive to become adult coral. With their branching shapes, coral often resemble underwater plants, the forests of the sea. But in truth, they are marine invertebrates belonging to a large group of animals known as cnidaria. They are colonial organisms, each composed of countless tiny creatures called polyps. Coral can reproduce sexually and asexually often depending on their life stage. When a lone polyp attaches itself to a rock on the sea floor, it reproduces asexually, dividing into clones that fortify a colony. Once the coral reaches maturity, it then reproduces sexually to maintain genetic diversity within the species. Over time, colonies grow and spread, forming the remarkable reefs seen today. Some of these underwater cities were first constructed over 50 million years ago. Of all reef-building coral, around three quarters are mass spawners. Other marine invertebrates also share this strategy, such as starfish, sea cucumbers and sponges. But coral spawning is perhaps the most grandiose, unfolding underwater, like a meticulously choreographed performance. Each dancer taking to the stage in absolute synchrony. Here, precise timing is everything. Coral are sedentary creatures, bound to the seafloor. They cannot move to make contact. And because colonies of the same species may be far apart, Spawning simultaneously is crucial. Spawning in mass prevents coral gametes from becoming too diluted in the vast ocean where they might otherwise never meet. The sheer numbers also serve to overwhelm the surrounding fish, so enough escape being eaten but the gametes are only viable for a few precious hours. Successful fertilization hinges on this narrow window of opportunity. Even a slight delay of minutes can reduce their chances. To achieve such precise coordination, coral finely tune their behavior to various environmental cues. One such cue is water temperature. Coral are highly sensitive to changes in temperature and the timing of their reproduction often aligns with the seasons. Typically, they spawn once a year during the warmer months of summer when conditions are most ideal for producing gametes.
The moon also exerts a profound influence on coral behavior. It serves as a celestial conductor. While water temperature determines the month of spawning, it is the full moon that dictates the exact night. Its presence may activate certain genes that induce reproduction. But what determines the exact hour of spawning may be the time of sunset. The period of darkness between the sunset and the rise of the full moon may be necessary to trigger the remarkable event. Human activities pose a significant threat to the delicate process of spawning. Today, nearly 15% of the world's reefs are polluted by artificial light. The night skies are around one-third brighter than they should be. This light obscures the natural cues that trigger spawning. Coral can be deceived into releasing their gametes outside the optimal windows and such mistimed spawning threatens the chances of fertilization. The modern world also brings a cacophony of noise. Coral larvae respond to acoustic cues for navigation. The sounds they rely on are typically produced by fish as they move about the reef, creating a symphony of life that guides them to their future homes. But man-made noises disrupt these natural sounds and disorientate the larvae. The most severe threat facing coral reefs today is perhaps climate change. Coral are sustained by their symbiotic partners, microscopic algae nestled within their tissues. The algae provide coral with essential nutrients through photosynthesis, while the coral offer algae a protected environment and access to sunlight. This mutualistic relationship is the heartbeat of the reef, driving its productivity and supporting a myriad of marine life. Yet, like any relationship, the bond is susceptible to strain. Rising temperatures place immense stress on coral. In this state, they expel their algae and lose their primary food source. Their tissues turn ghostly white. The reef's vibrant colors fade, replaced by a lifeless landscape. As climate change drives temperatures ever higher, these bleaching events become more frequent and severe, devastating marine ecosystems. Global warming has now pushed the world's reefs toward a fourth mass bleaching event, poised to be the most extensive on record. And by 2030, 90% of these underwater cities will vanish. But there may be a glimmer of hope. Researchers are pioneering new methods to fortify coral in a warming world. Species in warmer environments are naturally more tolerant than those in cooler areas. After a marine heat wave, they are more likely to survive, breed, and pass their genes on to the next generation. Selective breeding programs may help accelerate the spread of heat-tolerant genes across coral populations. Experimental evolution, where algae cultures are selected for under higher temperatures, has also shown potential as a solution. Once reintroduced into coral, these heat-tolerant strains could arm reefs with a fighting chance against climate change. Amidst a myriad of the ocean's wonders, coral spawning stands tall in its scale and grandeur. This synchronized performance ensures the continuity of the reefs, the bedrock of marine ecosystems, a quarter of all life underwater hinges on this display. Yet with the ever-increasing threats, the curtains may soon be drawn on this stage for good. <laughs>